Cooper obituary, testament, Chevelle, Ice Nine Kills, Kill Switch Engage, and many, many, many more bands. SonicTempleFestival.com for the tickets and all the info. It is May 8th through the 11th. Still in Columbus. Still at Crew Stadium. I got the four-day general admission weekend stadium passes for you. Sonic Temple Art and Music Festival. So good luck. Call her 10. These are yours. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. This is the best time of the year when the leaves are falling and so is your IQ because you're listening to The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. I was on a flight from Atlanta back to New York. Former President Jimmy Carter was on the same flight as me. Before the flight took off, he walked through and shook everybody's hand that was on board. Yo, are you running for president of this flight? <laughs> How you gonna assume everybody wants to meet you? Once you're a one-time president, you're bad at your job, and why are you flying commercial? <laughs> so many questions for Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter's 100 years old today. Damn. He doesn't look a day over 160, by the way. If you've seen Jimmy Carter, boy, holy cow. I mean, he's only seven years older than William Shatner. And uh, Jimmy Carter. Of course, this guy's done a lot of work, right? A lot of habitats for humanities. A lot of manual labor, boy. Mm -hmm. Habitats for so many humanities. He's from Plains, Georgia, famously. Famously a one-term president. Um, I don't remember Jimmy Carter as president. I was in kindergarten when he was actually president. Uh, His beloved Rosalind, uh, she died last Thanksgiving. She was just a few years younger than him, than he. And, um, you know, he was the, the son of a peanut farmer. That was his folksy story that he told to people. And Jimmy Carter probably would have not been elected president had the country not been in the state that it was in at the time, post-Watergate. But he's been in hospice care for a while, but he's 100 years old. He has... Hospice for humanity. (laughs) Yeah, I wonder if he built the building he's in. (laughs) He was our 39th president. And uh, so, yeah, he was only in the White House for four years. But his it's his post presidential period that has been, I think, the most influential. He and his wife founded something called the Carter Center. I think Jimmy Carter is probably the last Democrat that my parents voted for because they voted Republican ever since. Um, But he has also famously said over the past few months that he hopes he lives long enough to vote for Kamala Harris. But for a year and a half, he's been in hospice care. And um, he and his wife, both from Plains, Georgia. And they were uh, famously uh, relatively salt-of-the-earth people, not just faking it. But also not highly regarded as a president. I mean, he was highly regarded as a, as a, a fantastic person. But uh, I don't know that there's anybody who, you know, for a while he was a punchline. People would go, those are the guys, the worst president since Carter. You know, they threw it at Obama. They threw it, they threw it at whoever they can throw it at. Uh, the, when they do the bake sale on an episode of Simpsons, but Marge is in jail, so the money that she would have brought in didn't they, they didn't get enough money to get the statue they wanted, so they had to settle for a Jimmy Carter statue. <laughs> is one of my favorite. Probably my first moment of knowing who Jimmy Carter was was from that joke. And what is the joke? That is uh, that they couldn't afford to get the statue they wanted, so they had to settle for Jimmy Carter. And they go, oh, he was a failure as a president. No. <laughs> the town can't afford a Lincoln Memorial, That's so right, yeah. they get a Carter statue instead. Yeah, yeah. Marge in chains. History's greatest monster is what they call them. <laughs> yeah. 
So, yeah, he, he was considered uh, a lackluster president, you know. Uh, there, the Iranian hostages at the time. Carter did most of the work. Reagan ended up taking the credit. Uh, but that did get uh, Reagan elected. And um, Jimmy Carter, um, he ran for re-election, I'm pretty sure. I think he ran against um, Ronald Reagan, but he got stomped. Walter Mondale was Jimmy Carter's vice president. He was... Uh, he wanted to run for president as well, and he won precisely one state. Walter Mondale got stomped as well. He famously had the first female uh, vice presidential candidate, a woman named Geraldine Ferraro. And, you know, everybody tries to, you know, everybody makes their comments about uh, the team that they don't like. And because Geraldine Ferraro uh, was the first woman in that position, Walter Mondale, who was from the state of Minnesota... And it was the sole state that he won in the election, I believe. Reagan just was a landslide. But um, Walter Mondale's folksy nickname, his friends called him Fritz. And so he would roll that out on the campaign trail, trying to get all folksy with people. You just call me Fritz. Well, what happened was when he grabbed Geraldine Ferraro as his running mate, his detractors referred to them as Fritz and Tits. Uh, See what they did there? That's uh -huh. pretty good. Pretty good. Listen, people like alliteration. They like rhyming. They like whatever they can get. So, yes, as a president, uh, Jimmy Carter oversaw some really bad stuff uh, economically and, you know, gas crisis and all that kind of stuff. So uh, the dude was doomed uh, to being a one-termer. But um, after that, he just kind of went back to doing what he probably would have done in the first place, which was helping people out. And so uh, Rosalind Carter, who was, the, of course, former first lady, she died last year. And his family was like, we don't think he's going to live much longer. So a lot of people, even in his own family, are kind of surprised that he has uh, trucked along to 100. He and Rosalind Carter were married for 77 years. Think about that. Imagine being married. I mean, we might none of us might live to 77 years old. You know, but people of that generation who married and just stay married. Married for 77 years. Holy Christ. I'm good on that. I mean, I... Why? There's Ugh. nothing wrong with it. I'm just, I, I don't even... A lot of things wrong with it. I don't know if that's... Horrible. I don't, I don't know. It's not for everyone. It's definitely not for everyone. But I mean, you, you know, know. I talk to somebody that's been married that long. They don't even have, they, they're, like my parents have been married for 47 years. Mm-hmm. My okay, parents. But yeah, I don't think that that's going to be true forever because the people who've been married for, you know, 50 years now probably weren't getting married because of love as their number one reason. You know what I mean? If these people got married in the 70s. There were still a lot of uh, yeah, like stereotypes. Women, women were able to have a credit card for like four years at that point. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> is that they were like, I am, I'm not allowed to have a bank account in my state. I guess I'll marry this guy. That's like who's been married 50 years today. Right. I, think that'll be ch I think that'll change with our generation. Like when we've been married 50 years, it'll be like, oh, no, this is because I truly love your grandfather. Well, but also even the people, even the generation you're talking about, it's not like when women were able to get their own credit cards or whatever you want your example to be. It's not like there were mass divorces going on. It also, yeah. It so also there were a lot acceptable. of people that were, there were a lot of people that were staying together. I, I mean, think that my parents had been married 52 years when my dad died. And they were inseparable. So obviously, uh, for me, you know, divorce didn't exist in my family until me and my brother, my middle brother, he and his wife have been married 27 years. So it's like, you know, I never even had a conversation with my parents about divorce because it was so, I didn't grow up with two people who like were staying together, even though they didn't like each other. Like my example of my parents was they were always together. My oh, yeah. parents are always together, but I also know whenever they're apart, I don't want to. I don't want to share their business. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't. Uh, no, but my well, parents no, were, saying, you know, were I a great example for me. Yeah. I just couldn't pull it off. There's probably a lot of people who are like that, Bill. Who, who you talk to them, but I'm saying that those. 
those marriages, and this is a very broad generalization, I'm not saying every single one of them, but I feel like people who got married in the 60s and 70s, maybe because we're in love, wasn't number one reason. Well, the, I, th- I think there was love, but I think also religion plays a lot into people not getting divorced, where they go, oh, we, we said to that do us part, so we're not going to get Well, divorced. not only that, but marrying for love is a relatively recent yeah. idea, well, right? That's what I, mean, I mean, yeah, we there's don't... nothing wrong with some mm-hmm. pragmatism involved. It's it's like, only maybe 20 or 30 or 40 years that people have been talking about getting married for love. When Bill says, yuck, I don't want to, you see the people who've been married 70 years, I'm like, but that's because I don't think that there, sure, there are some couples that got married 70 years ago because they just wanted to make it work with the person they want to be with, but I feel like that's going to be a new thing. That's going to be our thing. When you see our generation getting to that 20, 30, 40 years together point, it'll be like, yeah, we've had every option to get out of this, and we decided not to, you know? Todd and his wife are about to hit their 30th. Um, His mom and dad were each married three times. They were born in the 40s. Yeah, that was like the age of, you know, my mom will be 76 next month. Um, And, you know. I mean, we joke about it here, but the, the, I don't even think it would occur to my mother um, to become romantically involved with a person other than my father. But that was the example that I grew up with. I mean, my mom had a couple of friends who got divorced, you know, when I was younger. And it wasn't a huge deal, but it was a hell of a lot bigger of a deal than it is today, you know. So when people talk about like the sanctity of marriage, I always roll my eyes. I know what they're talking about, but people don't treat it. I don't care if you believe in an invisible man in the sky or not. People don't certainly treat it like anything sacred. The only thing that that I think of when I hear the sanctity of marriage now is that holy matrimony is between one grandpa and one cheese barn. What <laughs> is that? It's just some meme that somebody passed around. And oh. I... Love it. Between one grandpa and one cheese barn. (laughs) Exactly. All right. Diddy's trying to get out of prison. He's Mm -hmm. trying to come up with any combination of of, um, things that will uh, let him out to try to get bail. First, he was like, I'll give you $50 million. They said no, because you'll get on a plane and you'll go to another country. And so he's been sitting there in uh, the Metro Detention Center there in Brooklyn. Just a stone's throw from our own Mary Lynn Santora. She could go, I go sign visit? right in and uh, visit him. As media? I'm here to do an interview with Diddy. As Mary. No, as media. They're not going to just let me in. Why not? Me. Hey, I'm I'm here if to- I said, I'm representing Bobby Pitts for my heart media. <laughs> they'd be like, right this way, madam. There you go. Madam. Mm, they'd call you madam, would they? I don't have a- I have a, I have a blazer and a, and a pencil skirt. I could mm-hmm. put a look together for this. Well, this is uh, the new thing that Diddy's lawyers are throwing up for their consideration. Diddy has, A, agreed to a ban on women coming to his house. He'll ban women. Uh, He will undergo weekly drug testing. He will not meet with anyone who could be considered a witness or a co-conspirator. The only women allowed into his home would be his mother and his baby's mama. He's already uh, tried twice to get bail, and he has been denied both times because they consider him, and probably rightfully so, a flight risk. But there are, um, you know, he's getting to Deshaun Watson levels of women who are coming out and filing lawsuits uh, against him, and so it's making a lot of um, actors and performers and entertainers nervous. Because there's a lot of people who have partied with Diddy uh, over the past couple of decades. And uh, they're, I'm sure they're all freaking out. What was going on when I was there? Was there something I missed? You know, a lot of people have pictures of them with their arms around Diddy. And it doesn't mean there's anything hinky going on with those people. But if you're one of those people, whether you're J-Lo or whether you're uh, uh, Ashton Kutcher or whether you're Kevin Hart, everybody is kind of puckering up down below, hoping that, you know, Diddy doesn't throw somebody under the bus. 
because one of these women who has filed a lawsuit against him reportedly has given some videotape to her attorney that has some, quote, A-list celebrity in it doing some nasty things. Now, that might just be sensationalism, right? Might not be an A-lister. Or an A-lister from 20 years ago. Think about that, too. Fame is fleeting. You can't become unfamous, but you can become less famous. And somebody who was... Uh, imagine... Let, think of somebody that you would never think of that would end up with the P. Diddy freak off videotapes. You go, oh my God. I mean, like one morning there's a story and they're like, well, it was John Cryer the whole time. It was Ducky. And, um, you know, but he's not, that's not somebody whose you know, career is going to be destroyed. Barbara Streisand. Barbara Streisand, yes is in one of Diddy's freak-offs. They're running a train on Babs right there. Or Babs is running the train. Yeah. Straps on, straps yep. in. Yup. They got her bent over the jacuzzi. Is she <laughs> the, this one's for the boys guy? This one's for the boy. Or is that the give it up with the troops? What's the Barbra Streisand song about boys? For the boys was a Bette Midler movie. Bette Midler. All right. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Bet Midler. Bet Midler. They got Bet Midler. <laughs> yeah, they're like hocus pocus, bitch. They got her bent over the jacuzzi. So yeah, there's gonna be somebody in one of these uh, videotapes, and um, it might not be that exciting. You know, there are a lot of people uh, partied with Diddy. And I don't know that he's got any leverage. I think at this point, if he had any leverage with respect to throwing celebrities under the bus, because what's that going to get you? That's not going to get you anything. Oh, I have a videotape of Ashton Kutcher and some girl. They're going to be like, yeah, we don't care. This isn't we have a dozen them. women over here who said you were, you know, running a harem. And and there's like fake viral videos going around about a tunnel under Diddy's house. And I that's saw all. That. It's like a swim tunnel. People are sending it to me. I'm like, this is intercut with when they went into El Chapo's drug tunnels. That's not uh, that's not real. That's not under Diddy's house. No, the amount of stuff that is like altered or AI or something that like people just share. It's terrifying. Like, they're like, this is this is the thing. I'm like, oh man. Yeah. You got please. Stop. Some of it is one thousand percent fake and you can tell. But a lot of people don't care. No, it's more fun for them to go, hey, check this out. Look what I found. So in much the same way as you might mentally run a celebrity death pool, there's a celebrity uh, ditty pool to think about. And it might be Bette Midler. It could be. It might or be Barbara, Barbara Streisand. Streisand. <laughs> but I mean somebody, the last person you'd expect, but they turn out they're a huge freak, and you're like, wow, I wouldn't even imagine that they would know Diddy. Mr. Rogers. Like Yo-Yo Ma. Well, Mr. Rogers is dead. He's been dead for a minute. But, but he wasn't always dead. I take dead. your point. He, that's true. Mr. <laughs> Rogers was not always dead. I'm going to put that on the list. Very well could have yep. been at a Diddy party 20 years ago. Yep. Won't you be my neighbor oh, in, this, in this hot tub? Taking off more than that sweater vest. Mm hmm Let me introduce you to Daniel Tiger. That's what I call my penis. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll see what happens. The king of make-believe, baby. That's right. <laughs> That's what he's going to say about all those women. Yeah, they're, they're all the queens of make-believe. Queens of make-believe. Just making up accusations. Yep. I'm innocent. Hey, want to go to Mushroom Head Halloween? It is an annual tradition here in Northeast Ohio, and it's coming up again. Mushroom Head Halloween is Saturday the 26th at the Agora with Upon a Burning Body, There Is No Us, and more. It's always a big, big to-do. So I'll have a couple of tickets for you after the break. More money on the way, too. Next keyword for you to grab a 1000 bucks from the Buzzard Bookie is coming up at 4.30. It's the Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio.